The Enzo Circle is something that I named my first album after, uh, Enzo. Um, it's something that I come back to a lot in my music making and it's, it's, a, it's a circle that is never quite complete. I basically, I got into meditation and I, I was... Um, I, I really like the idea of, of the meditation that you do with the Enzo Circle because it's not driven by scriptures or rules, it's very much made up of the meditation that, that you want to do. Um, and the, the idea of the circle is that it's, it's, it holds on to something or it holds on to nothing. Um, and I suppose this, this idea of like broken loops kind of makes up a lot of my music. Um, and I suppose like my music is just kind of like who I, it makes up who I am. Um, and I, I really try and practice to be like a Zen individual, whatever that means. Um, not saying that I've reached Zen yet, but uh, I'm definitely giving it a good go. <laughs> I was thinking a lot about this question about um, what object would, would represent me and my music. Um, and I had an idea. Uh, it's my man, it's my guy, this is Kenny. And he's been with me for six years now. Um, my brother um, uh, decided that I needed a goldfish. It was when I was really struggling as an insomniac with my sleep. So he got me, um, well we went together to get Kenny. And he was like, he was really not, he was a bit of a weird fish, a bit of an odd one. Why are you kidding? And, um, well, I picked him and we got him up to good health. And he's just been with me ever since. Everyone says your, your fish will only, only last a year, but here he is six years later. And he's been, he's been through, oh, he's, he's moved to about, um, well, six or seven different houses with me. And, and uh, he's even made a trip from Leeds to London. And, uh, We've got like a very symbiotic relationship, you know, where like he feels what I feel and, and I feel what he feels. He's a bit distressed at the moment, I think, because he's like, oh, I'm on camera. <laughs> well, I'll start with the pros. Um, and the pros of being a woman in the music industry is that there's some really amazing women in the industry and there's an amazing community. And it's, it's, it, I've really enjoyed the experience of getting to know different women. Um, and we kind of have this shared understanding of how it feels to be, well, a woman <laughs> to start with, and then a woman that makes music. Um, and we share that in conversation. Um, but most importantly, when we share that on the stage, it creates something really, really magical and special. Um, my my favourite experience of this is with my band Jay Frisco. Um, it's made up of Megan Rowe and Gemma Freeze. And uh, we met about four years ago at Leeds College of Music. And they, funnily enough, were interviewing me on a podcast called Girls That Gig. And it was all about women in music. And we kind of started to get to know each other in, in, in this podcast. And... Um, and then we decided, like, right, okay, let's make some music together. And we got into a room and we made some art and uh, we, we just jammed, we just improvised to the artwork that we made. And it, it, it felt absolutely incredible, it felt amazing. Um, I, I didn't really, I'm not sure how to find the words to explain how it felt, really. Afterwards, <laughs> we were talking about why it felt the way that it did, you know, it, it was really electrifying. And I think it was Megs that said it actually. Um, and she was like, this is the first time I've played in a room just with women. And me and Gemma were packed up and we're like, that's the same for us too. And that's what I realised, like, that's, that's why I felt the way that it did. Um, I guess because there's a shared understanding and this experience of, you know, how you, you're brought up to play music and you're told that those instruments aren't for, for girls and you've got to play this or all the, the teachers that you you have a men or, or the influences of men that's one of the biggest ones I suppose I'm kind of leaning into the cons here <laughs> um all the inspirations that you're told to check out it's just men 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 all the time um 
And so women then feel like music can't be for them. Like, oh, we can't play drums because you never see a woman playing drums. You can't play guitar because you don't see a woman doing it. Um, and we've, we've definitely made a lot of change in the industry, like a lot actually. There's, there's been some amazing pioneers with that, some fantastic organisations uh, that I've worked with that are, you know, really are making a difference. And, and, I, and that's another pro actually, is that I love being a part of that. I love being part of a community that's in, inspiring um, the younger generation of women to come through. Um, I should name some really. There's, there's Jazz North doing Girls at Gig. There's Bright Sound doing both sides now. Uh, of course, there was Vanessa Reed who set up the Women Make Music Fund, the PRS. Um, but it still feels like we've not come far enough, to be honest. Um, I was watching a film um, made by the guest stars. Uh, if you don't know the guest stars, check them out. They were a band of all women, um, kind of playing in the 70s and 80s. And um, Alison Rayner and Deja Cartwright, they, they run something called Blow the Fuse. Uh, and they, are, at the moment during the pandemic, they can't, they can't put on their gigs that they usually put on at the Vortex. So at the moment they're putting on um, some like online broadcasts. Um, so they're like filming some, some YouTube videos and then they, they like premiere at a certain date and time. Anyway, there's one that premiered on the 21st of January and it was archive footage of the guest stars and they are incredible, one of Jay Frisco's biggest influences, one of my biggest influences and lots of, they were a band of all women and they're, they're talking about what it's like to be a woman in music and there's, there's loads of things that stand out to me and one of the things that, that one of the women said was how <laughs> all the music that we make um, feels like it's, it's made for men because men wrote the music so we're still trying to figure out like how, like what is the music that women make and what does that sound like? I thought that was a really interesting thing. Um, but still the same problem that, you know, men come along and patronise you, tell you you can't play your instrument or they know better. Um, definitely that women couldn't possibly be sound engineers. Um, oh, you must be a singer. You know, they, they watch us unload these massive cases of huge instruments and gear and still afterwards you get out of the taxi and they say oh so you sing the band do you no you know women can women can do whatever they want and definitely can play instruments so yeah i don't know i i, I i'm very proud to be a woman in music and I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of all my peers um and, and uh, yeah I, I i love i love being a woman in music um i just hope that as we go along there'll be more of us um, and we just keep inspiring the next generation and keep also revealing all of the stuff that has happened in the past as well because there, there always have been women making music it's, again that you know women were told that they, they couldn't be on the stages or it had to all be hidden <laughs> yeah a lot of the men that celebrated out there now there actually it was the wives that wrote the music anyway <laughs> A musician in the pandemic, I still can't help it. The one question I want everyone to ask is how did the gig go? How was your gig, Lara? How how was your gig? And it's something that people always forget to ask. And, I, and, I, and maybe it's um, a little selfish, I don't know. But I it's like the one thing that I would just love to talk about after I've played because it's just there's such a my response I suppose would be like it was life changing, like when I've done a gig it just feels like you've put everything out there and just like you give all your energy and, and it's like you, you strip bare on stage and then it feels so weird that then people wouldn't want to ask about that experience but maybe it's only interesting to the people actually on the stage and maybe that's why people don't ask. So my re recurring dream is actually a recurring nightmare, um, I've had it for years and it's that I'm being chased by a man and he's following me down um, a, a, a cobbled narrow street and I'm running, 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 running and he's running, running, running and I, I'm always ahead of him and then right at the end of the dream he catches up with me and he pins me against the wall and his face is always covered but sometimes the figure seems familiar and sometimes it feels like it's a stranger.
So I actually wouldn't want to get buried. Um, the idea of being buried absolutely terrifies me. Uh, and to be totally honest, death absolutely terrifies me. So I'm not going to spend very long on this conversation, um, this question. Um, instead of being buried, I would want to be scattered um, around a number of places that I, I guess just mean a lot to me. And hopefully those that are close to me will know where those places will be. Um, and in terms of any objects, I think uh, they would just be donated or given to family and they can uh, decide what to do with them.